everybody, it's Allison Williams here, your law firm mentor. Law Firm Mentor is a business coaching service for solo and small law firm attorneys. We help you grow your revenues, crush chaos in business, and make more money. Hi, everybody. It's Allison Williams here, your law firm mentor. And this week's episode of the podcast is dedicated to one of my favorite topics in law firm business growth, which is sales. And not just any sales, but sales by the phone or what we refer to as client intake. So I, I, I often get the question from people, how do you uh, create an intake system where you get to the point where leads are coming in consistently and you're able to get the people that call to convert? Because there's a whole lot of discussion online and a lot of discussion in chat groups or in LinkedIn groups, just in different forums where lawyers gather about the idea of making sure that we value our time and that we charge for our time. But of course, there is fear associated with that for some people because as soon as you decide that you are going to charge for your consultations, you reduce the number of people that will schedule. Now you also tend to increase the number of people who schedule that will actually show up because plenty of people, when they perceive that something is free, they undervalue it, they don't put it on their schedule, they don't show up for it. But even once you get past the general idea of having enough volume where free consultations with a low show up rate is a lesser alternative than paid consultations with a high show up rate, you still have this general idea that you know that intake is what moves the needle to get people through the door, but you have a question about whether or not that is just luck of the draw or if you can do something to make it better. So a lot of people will focus on strategies such as changing what you charge, using a phone, uh, a, an answering service or a client intake uh, provider offsite. And there are definitely pros and cons to using those types of services. So I definitely don't want to denigrate those services. But for a lot of law firms, when they have enough traction that they are actually going to dedicate a team member or a portion of a team member's time to intake, they have the question of who should it be? How do I get that person optimized? And what do I do to get them to performing at the highest height so that I know that every person that calls my law firm, if they are the type of person that I can help and the person that I'd be inclined to work with, that I actually have that opportunity. So today we're not just gonna talk about intake, but we're gonna be talking about who is handling your intake, okay? So that means who is the person that you are entrusting to be on the phones as a representative of your firm to get people to schedule an appointment with your law office. So today we're gonna to be talking about three different strategies, three different components rather, of the ideal person for your intake. All right, so the first up is who the person is, right? So that's like the title of, of today's program. Who is the person handling your intake? So I always tell people, simple acronym for this, when you are hiring an intake person, you want a piece of pie, P-I-E. That stands for personable, inquisitive employee. You need somebody who is both personable and inquisitive. It is not sufficient that you get a really likable person who's kind of just going through the motions of doing whatever it is that you ask them to do. Not saying that this person has to be someone who's gonna set the world on fire, but you have to expect that a person who is in this role, who's gonna be front facing, forward client facing, most of their time, they have to be the kind of person that enjoys talking to people. They need to have the type of personality that engages through the phone because most of our sensory information comes in through our eyes. So if the person can't be seen and they can only be heard, you have to make sure that what the prospect hears on the other end of the phone is a pleasant sounding person who genuinely appears as somebody who wants to talk to them. Now that might seem somewhat commonsensical, but not always. Sometimes I think we figure that intake is one of those uh, lower level positions it tends to bring in a lower level of compensation. It tends to be a starter job when someone is fresh out of college. Oftentimes people will take intake jobs in law firms when they want to investigate law as a career or as a stepping stone to get them into law school. 
nothing wrong with that. But the person still needs to have the type of general presentation that is going to be effective in the role. So it's not enough to just get somebody who's willing to do the role, but they need to be somebody who would have an inclination to be successful at it. And some things you just can't teach. I can't teach somebody who doesn't like people to suddenly like people as a component of the job. Now, the other thing that I think is often missing when we talk about who this person is, is I think a lot of people are looking for long-term employees for their law firms, right? We, we, most people don't plan their business around the idea of turning it over in the workforce every couple of years. But the reality is, no matter how good an employer you are, no matter how, uh, how well you treat your workforce, no matter how successful you are at attracting high quality personnel, at the end of the day, lawyers and legal staff move around. And that has now become the new normal. So putting aside for the moment that you need to evolve into a place where you cannot take that personally, there is a very real perspective of getting people not just in the door, but getting them in the door and operating at maximum optimal speed as soon as possible. And one of the ways that you can do that is by making sure that when you're hiring, that you're choosing people that are a natural fit for the role that they are gonna occupy in your office. Now, the next thing that we talked about, you know, in our acronym PI, right? So we've got personable. The next part of that is that the person needs to be inquisitive. And the reason for this is that even though we in the law don't often think of ourselves in true form of business, we think about ourselves as practices, professional practices, we are in business. And as a part of business, the way that we're selling our service in the first instance is by selling the consultation on the phone. So when that person from your office gets on the phone with whomever it is that's calling, they need to not just get the name, rank, and serial number type information, but they need to be having a sales conversation. Now, there's a whole process to teaching a person how to sell by the phone. That's actually one of the things that we cover in our legal sales for attorneys and non-attorneys uh, two-day business retreat. But before you even get to the point of getting them to selling, you have to have the right mindset for what they're doing on the phone. And one of the things that we found in the industry of looking at people that are successful with intake is they are naturally inquisitive people. That means they are going to naturally be oriented toward asking questions and figuring out what's going on and digging deeper beyond the surface of what they're told. Because if they take at face value everything that a person says on the phone, before that person gets into your office, you will oftentimes have a glut of people to meet with who are just not appropriate prospects for your office whatsoever. So whatever your screening mechanism is, right? Some people screen based on income. They say, if the person doesn't make X dollars, they're not gonna be able to afford the type of litigation that we serve. Or if the person uh, lives in a certain area, they are too far away from the law firm, we are not gonna physically transport ourselves to the courthouse even though at the time I'm recording this, we are in the fourth quarter of 2020. And now we have had the experience of court by Zoom. <laughs> Who would have thought, right? But, um, you know, some people still say, you know, I, at some point the courts will open up again. I don't want to be in a position where I am uh, having to hustle driving two hours to get to a court proceeding for somebody. And, and I don't want to have the kind of relationship with my client where they feel resentful because I'm charging them you know, a, a $1,000 or more just to transport myself to and from the courthouse. So some people will screen out based on that. But if the person on the phone can screen out based on those basic criteria, I think most people could probably do that. Certain other criteria might be a little bit harder. So if you have a practice area where you know the person who is coming into the business, the, the prospect who'd be coming in as a client, needs to have a certain mindset or has to have certain goals or has to have a legal issue that is uh, of a certain size, meaning there's a certain uh, economic recovery that's associated with it. You need to have an intake person who's going to be able to ask questions, not just because they are on a script, but in a way that generally gets you to, yes, this is the right prospect for us or no, this is not, without a whole lot of question. And a naturally inquisitive person will do that. So once you have your piece of pie, you get your personable inquisitive employee in the door, 
you also have to be looking to measure that person and their performance and to aim for consistency. And that really dovetails us into uh, the training process, which is the next key strategy we're gonna talk about. But I also want to uh, reiterate that you have to have the right mindset with your employees. And of course, mindset is what we always start with with everything in Law Firm Mentor. But this, this particular employee, the, the one mindset piece that is really important is the money mindset piece. So I have, ha I have coached countless lawyers who will have an intake person in their office who is resistant to charging a consultation fee. And they will almost run away from the consultation fee when the topic comes up. So they go through the whole process, they get the person on the phone, assure them that they're gonna have a confidential conversation, gather some basic name, rank, serial number type data, and then ultimately, go through a process of getting the story in a way that gets the person excited about solving their problem. Okay. And we teach that again in legal sales for attorneys and non-attorneys, but that whole sales process on the phone ends with an offer to have that person be helped with their problem by coming into the office. And there is a fee for that. So I have heard any number of intake professionals that will say things like, okay, so um, great, we can schedule you for Monday and you're gonna come in at 10 o'clock. You're gonna meet with so-and-so. That person's gonna walk you through X, Y, and Z. Please bring your documents. And I, I have to charge you 20, I have to, I have to charge you $225 to um, come in. And I hope you're okay with that, right? You could just immediately hear the shift in energy when I said that. And you can hear how the person is struggling with the fact that they have to, quote unquote, charge this fee. They don't see it as a benefit to the prospect that the person pay in exchange for the valuable service they're about to receive of the consultation. So when that conversation comes up around money and there's a shift in energy, what your prospect is hearing is not just the, the data that came out of the person's mouth. It's not just the words of, hey, I'm gonna charge you X dollars for this consultation. But they heard that there is something disingenuous, not valuable, not on the level, not honest about the person charging. Because when we are integrity with what we are doing, we are constant in what we are doing, right? We're, we're able to, however that person presents, if that person presents is jovial, they're gonna be jovial when they're talking about money. If that person presents as very subdued, they're going to be subdued when they're talking about money. But if a jovial person suddenly becomes subdued when the money conversation comes up, there's a disconnect there. And that disconnect educates the prospect that somebody does not feel that what they are saying is either truthful or, or is valid in some way. So you have to be careful that the people that you are putting on your phones actually respect not just the rules of your office, but they understand the value and why they are required to charge and that they don't have resistance around that when they start the process. Okay, so as I mentioned just a moment ago, training process is the second key strategy in getting the right person in your, uh, in your office for intake. So what do I mean by training process? Okay, I think most people understand that you have to give your, uh, your new hire the, the keys to the kingdom in terms of what they're going to be doing. You have to tell them what they're required to do. If you have a CRM and you have software where your contacts or potential new client uh, data is going to be retained, you have to train them on that. So that's not, um, that, that certainly is an important part of it, but that's not really what we're talking about here. So when we talk about training process, I'm talking about somebody from the office the spending on the size of the office, it could be the owner if you're super solo, or it could be an office manager, lead paralegal, last person who performed the role successfully, any number of people can do it, but somebody needs to be going through the step-by-step -step process of how the, the, the intake professional is supposed to engage on the phone. And that includes a lot of characteristics, not just what you say or what you ask, but how you enter information into software, how you engage with the prospect from a tonal perspective, how you modulate the tone of your voice, how you alter the tone of your voice, how you uh, communicate, how you listen, active listening is required here. And a lot of this process 
is not something that is intuitive to a business owner, right? We understand the idea of having systems. We talk about systems all the time. We have an entire program, Systematize Your Law Business, that's all about creating a culture of systems so that you and your team are always systematizing so it doesn't become a big chore when something changes. But the system of training a person has much more viability and much more necessity in a situation where that person is doing something that affects your money. So everything in business to some degree affects your money, right? If you have a poor customer experience, if you have poor personnel um, policies in your law firm, you can definitely have an adverse impact on the bottom line. But some things are more direct, right? If you don't get people to schedule an appointment, you're not gonna have people to sell to, in which case you're not, you're not gonna have business. So it's very key that there be a training process that is designed around key performance indicators, KPIs, for how that person is supposed to ultimately drive success in the role of intake. And driving success means not just getting people to schedule, because there are some people that no matter how bad your intake person is on the phone, no matter how dry they are, no matter how disinterested they sound in talking to the person, no matter how much they skip over uh, critical pieces of information, no matter how accurate the information is that they put in the software, that prospect made up their mind because they were referred by their best friend who was also represented by your law firm or because they have been, you know, watching your videos for months. They, they come eager, anxious, ready to buy, and they know that you're the one. Most people do not have that decision made when they first encounter your law firm. And how your front-facing, your public-facing employees interact with them is a critical determinant. So when you think about what we're going to be telling this person of their job, the training process has to go into a lot more nuance than simply, here is what you do and here's how you do it. This is where you really have to build in demonstration. Okay, so that means that the person has to not just know that they're going to be guided by the metrics and know that they're going to be expected to continually increase the production, i.e. continually increase the number of people they get scheduled based on the leads that you provide them. But you also want that person to know that they should be monitoring the improvement of the tone of their voice the pace at which they communicate, the alteration of pace between themselves and the prospect. It is a dance. And there are times where you're going to speed up what you're saying in order to change the behavior of your prospect. And there are times where you're gonna slow it down. And if you don't go through all of these nuances with your prospect or with your intake professional, they can certainly get name, date and serial number type information from the prospect. And maybe the prospect will close or not, but that's not because of your intake professional, it's not withstanding them, right? It's like, if I know that I'm going into the gas station to buy gas, I don't need the gas attendant to convince me that this is the gas station I ought to go to. I'm there, I need the gas, I pull up to the pump, I buy. Legal services, obviously not the same price point, not the same quality, and certainly not a commodity in the same sense as gasoline. So it's very critical that the person on the phones is paying attention to all of those moving pieces. Now you might be saying, well, gosh, I don't know that I have the wherewithal to teach my intake person all of the nuances of communication so that they can be the most effective communicator on the phone. And there are a lot of resources that are out there where you can find information about communication. We talk a lot about communication in Law Firm Mentor, and we have the Law Firm Mentor Accelerator course, which is all about moving your business to marketing online, but we do specifically address intake and how to train up the people on the phones so that you will ultimately be able to get that person into a place of ease in communication. So shameless plug there, I own it. Uh, I think the course is fabulous for that. Uh, but even if you don't buy the course, one of the things that you can do right now is the next thing we're gonna talk about. And this is our third and final strategy on getting the right people handling intake in your law firm. And it is about recording the intake calls. Now, 
I know I'm, I'm talking to an audience of lawyers. I can already hear the bells and whistles and the red flags and the, the stomping feet on the topic of recording. So I will give the legal disclaimer now. You must know whether you are in a two-party state or a one-party state for purposes of the Wiretap Act. In other words, you have to know whether or not you must have consent of a person to record them if you are a party to a communication or if you are in a one-party state, which is uh, essentially that as long as you are a party to the communication, you have authority to record it. So yes, definitely check that out to make sure that you're complying with the law before you undertake recording. But we're going to go through the value of recording for those of you that are able to do that. And for those of you that are not, I do have a workaround so that you're not recording your prospect without their, without their consent. So the first thing is that the value of recording is not necessarily what is said by your, uh, your intake professional. Yes, you wanna listen to what they say because there could be times where they skipped over something that's in your script or they said something that's not technically accurate in your law firm. I'll never forget one time I had, a, um, I had an intake professional, this is like many, many years ago, and she got on the phone and she gave out our uh, prior website address. Now, in this particular instance, it was fine because we had done a redirect from our old website to our new website, but the new website had our branded name versus the old website that just had my, my personal name as our URL. And it was very irksome to hear that because it was off brand. So, you know, we corrected that and that was a small enough thing. But that's not the kind of thing that you're usually listening for. And you're also not listening to catch your intake professional doing something wrong. In fact, what I tell people all the time is that if I'm listening in, walking by, stepping, stepping into a conversation, um, meandering in the hallway, I'm listening to catch them doing something right, not to catch them doing something wrong. But having said that, I know that most people will have an expectation that if someone, if their employer says, I want to record you when you are on the phone in this role, there is immediate visceral reaction of no, 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 please don't do that. And when I first started to realize how urgently people did not want to be recorded, okay? And, and I say I started to realize it because I had my own experience of kind of deep breaths, if you will, uh, when I realized that uh, some of my bosses had actually uh, obtained a preceding tape to listen to me orally arguing a motion. And I remember, uh, I remember that day that I found that out and I felt kind of betrayed. It was almost like you snuck behind my back to, to find out this, this piece of information, forgetting, of course, that I was making this argument in a court proceeding, in a court, in a, in a court that was open, you know, so it wasn't a sealed proceeding. Plenty of people heard me that day. And I thought I did a good job that day. So I was like, why am I getting all in my feelings about the fact that they listened, you know, they got the tape after the fact. But it was really the same reason why you will experience your employees have a feeling about you recording, which is the idea of being judged. Most people do not like to be judged. Most people will have a visceral objection to the idea of being judged and the feeling that comes with being kind of on the hot seat, right? So if I'm in a person to person experience, if I'm sitting across from you and asking you questions and listening to your answers, you can wind it back, you can step it up, you can rephrase if you see my reaction and it's not what you desire. But after the words have been heard, after the words have been recorded, they are memorialized time immortal and you know, forever bound uh, to what that moment was. And so people know that and they oftentimes fear that they are going to face repercussions for saying something in a way that's not perfect. So while most employees expect on some level that if they come into a new workplace, they are going to be evaluated, the evaluation is usually in the product that is produced. So if it's marketing assistant, lawyer, paralegal, I'm going to be evaluating you based on the product you give me, right? Based on the website uh, content I read, based on the motion I read, maybe based on uh, the complaint for uh, legal relief that you drafted. 
I'm not going to be evaluating you on the process and whether or not there was a beautiful seamless flow from the start of the activity to the end of the activity, right? I'm not going to be looking under the hood. I just want to see that there's a well-built car at the end of the assembly line. And so most people will immediately shut down when you suggest to them, hey, I want to record you. So what I would suggest is that you make sure that you overcome that resistance by going through the process yourself and sharing a recording with your team member. Now, that does not mean you have to become your own intake person. I'm not suggesting that you give yourself a demotion. But I do want you to think about recording yourself in some capacity. Could be at a court proceeding, could be in a meeting, but give yourself the experience of what your employee is going to experience when you listen to yourself and have them listen to you on recording so that you can see what it's like for another person to see you, hear you as you are hearing yourself, because that's the experience that they're gonna have. And as uncomfortable as it may be for you, it will be even more uncomfortable for them because of the status that they hold relative to you, right? They're an employee. They know that if they're not pleasing their boss in some way, they can be terminated. So a lot of people having had the experience of being harshly judged in their past are gonna be resistant to that and you have to overcome that. Okay, so a little bit more about the recording process. As I said earlier, it's not so much about what they say, it really is about all of the communication dynamic, which includes their tone, their pace, their pitch, so um, the, the height of volume, the octave uh, at which they speak, but most importantly, when I say pitch, I'm also referring to what they actually say to get the person to give their credit card information and sign up for a consult. And you also want to hear how they vary all of those dynamics in conjunction with the person they're speaking to. So there's lots of different ways that a person can engage on the phone, but this is what I have found to be the most valuable about recording. And mind you, I have sold 30, 40, $50,000 programs on the phone with nothing other than having heard the person give me information, having responded to that person, and having listened actively so that I can give that person what they are ultimately seeking in our conversation and have them commit to a price. So it's very critical that when you are listening to your, your person, that what they are listening to and what you're listening to is ultimately how they interact with the other person. And what is most important here is how they listen, not necessarily how they speak, but how they listen. So uh, case in point, you know, there is almost invariably people are calling law offices when they are distressed. So you want to make sure that your intake person expresses empathy in a way that is clear and um, readily apparent from what they say and how they say it on the phone. So somebody calls in and says, yeah, I'm, I'm calling because I got to see a lawyer. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. How is it that we may help you? Oh, well, my legal problem is X, Y, and Z, and I just don't know how I'm going to get it taken care of. Oh, I'm so sorry that you're going through that. You know, let's, let's get you some help. Okay. So I'm going to go through a process. I'm going to get some information from you, tell you about uh, what services we might be able to provide to help you with that problem, and then we're going to get you scheduled for an appointment. How does that sound? Right? So you're immediately going into expressing for the person to the person that you're not happy that they have a legal need for services. Now you might say, well, on the one hand, I am kind of happy because if I'm not selling them legal services, I'm not in business. <laughs> and there's definitely truth to that. But in the moment, you're not happy that they have the problem. You're just happy that you're a person who's able to solve it for them or a person that's able to help them. But if you come across too chipper and too upbeat and too perky, when a person is telling you their deepest, darkest secrets and what led them to call you for a divorce or a uh, sexual assault um, allegation that they're being prosecuted for, or uh, the purchase of a condemned property, or um, not, you know, non-payment of taxes and an and IRS lien that they need assistance with, or the dissolution of a business that they have been uh, toiling away at for a decade. 
you know, these are very sensitive topics. And so you don't want to come across, you don't want your intake person to come across like, hi, I'm so happy we can help you with your problem. Because that again conveys a certain level of happiness about the problem that you really don't have. You're not happy they have the problem. The other thing is that you want to make sure that there is a certain variability to how the tone and pace of the communicator is received by the person on the phone, the prospect. So I'll give you a good example. If you have somebody on the phone, if a prospect is on the phone and your intake person is just kind of whizzing right on along, okay? I'm snapping my fingers, by the way, if you hear that on the microphone. Like they're just go, 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 go. The person may feel rushed. They may feel that you are trying to quickly get them off the phone to get to the next thing, or they may feel that the intake uh, professional is distracted. Any number of those options come to mind when there's kind of a rushed go, 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 go feeling to the phone call. So you don't want to have that energy there. You also don't want to be consistent in your energy. You want to shift based on what happens, which means ultimately intake professional, if they are handling the call appropriately, they're going to be the leader of the conversation. They're going to direct the person what to do next, what to answer next, and what action to take at the end of the call. And so in order to stay in that energy, when a person is really, really whizzing along in their speech, you as the intake professional don't want to also be really whizzing along in your speech. You want to be able to slow it down with pregnant pauses and interjection at the right time so that you can get the information you need in order to sell the consultation. So it's very important that as you're listening, that you're not mirroring what the person is doing on the phone, but you are shifting your energy and your tone and your pace so that you can ultimately guide the person to the decision that you want, which is, of course, making the decision to hire the law firm, or at least book the consultation, right? Because that's what you're selling on the phone. The intake professional is selling the consultation. They're not selling the firm or the big purchase relative to the intake uh, meeting. They're actually just selling the intake meeting. So one of the things that I think is probably the biggest red flag that I hear when I have had the opportunity to listen in or listen to recordings of intake professionals is not having empathy in the right place. So this is kind of one of those uh, situations where some people are very, very regimented and they feel like the primary goal for them in a process is to follow the script. They are fine as long as they have the words up in front of them. And we all have had that experience, right? You call the bank and you reach a person on the phone who is clearly reading off a computer screen. So you'll get an experience something like this. Hi, I'm calling ABC Bank and I need to inquire about a problem on my bank account. And the person says, hi, uh, thank you for letting us know what the problem is. We are here to help. How may I best assist you? And you're thinking, didn't I just tell you I, I'm calling about a problem on my bank account? <laughs> right? That's the first thing out of my mouth, right? So they weren't listening or to the extent that they were listening, they weren't deviating from the script, right? Already red flag, you're annoyed. But you continue the process and you continue to get this question and answer back and forth kind of dance as opposed to what feels like a fluid conversation. And if you say something like, oh, I, you know, I, for some reason, um, this check was declined, but there's $10,000 in my bank account and this check was for $25. So I don't understand why it was declined and I'm frustrated because I really needed whatever I spent this check on. And then I had the embarrassing experience of having my check declined. And the person on the other phone, on the other end of the phone says, I am so sorry to hear that. Let me see what I can do about that. And you immediately feel like the person didn't care at all what you just said. They were reading off of their script. So that would be a situation where there's misplaced empathy. It was technically in the right location, but it was misplaced in the delivery to the person receiving the message. Now, I've also heard a complete lack of empathy from people that I've later come to learn are very high empathy people, but because they are so concerned about doing a good job, they didn't want to go off of grid or go off of script. 
So I'll give a perfect example, one of my favorite stories of all times from my own law firm. And this is years ago, I tend to in intake hire college kids or uh, young adults who are interested in the law and not sure if they want to go to law school. So they, they get a job in a law firm as a, as a stepping stone. So this particular person, uh, we'll call him Bob <laughs> to protect his identity. So Bob is on the phone one day. We have gone through a process of training him and he had previously had a call with a woman who called in about wanting a divorce. And at the time, she wasn't sure that she wanted to proceed he was appropriate in the call, but not setting the world on fire. Between the first time she called and a couple of months later, he had gone through training and he was exceptional at intake. Except on this particular day, something personal happened to him and he was very nervous. And so he actually pulled up the intake script because he was just like, mind is in another location. He wanted to make sure he got everything in there. So what happens? Woman calls up and says, hi, uh, Bob. Yeah, I don't know if you remember me. It's me, Kathy. Um, I called about a divorce however long ago. And for some reason, he actually remembered the, the sound of her voice. And he remembered and he said, oh, yes, I remember you weren't quite sure if you wanted a divorce. Um, has something changed in your circumstances? And she blurts out, yes, I came home and my husband was on top of my sister. And rather than express, oh, my goodness, I'm so sorry to hear that you must be um, stunned. He says, okay, great. Can we get you in for Monday at nine o'clock? <laughs> now, of course, he was seizing upon the urgency. That's something that we teach in, uh, in, in trainings that we do for intake professionals. And it's one of the things that we carry and, and, and cover in the accelerator course, that you do need to guide the conversation to find out what the person's urgency is and then sell them the opportunity to solve their problem. The urgency is to get into the office as soon as possible. But there was clearly a disconnect when this woman disclosed something jarring and disturbing to her. And there was almost like a peppy kind of upbeat, okay, now we can sell you something attitude from Bob rather than expressing empathy for the person who was clearly in distress when she called our office. So, you know, Bob did what he thought to do, kind of glossing over the empathy because in his view, what was most important was getting her the help that she needed. So we wanted to impress upon him the value of getting her the help she needed, but also to make sure that you show a human side and a level of compassion because this particular person luckily was not offended by that that wouldn't necessarily be the case for everybody so we learned a great lesson there that bob needed a little bit more training in making sure that empathy was expressed in the right place at the right time no matter the urgency with which a person presents their problem so there's a lot more to this right this is just we're talking about the value of recording uh, the, the third critical piece of making sure that when you're considering who you are bringing into your intake process, you're making sure that that who has the greatest chance of success by being a personal inquisitive employee when you hire them, by going through an appropriate training process where you're really drilling down on what they have to do, and by having you demonstrate to them, by pointing things out to them on the recordings of their calls, how they ultimately can optimize their performance. So there is a lot that goes into client intake. This is just a very, very small microcosm of that. If you want more information about how to optimize the performance of your intake professionals, the resources that I've referenced during today's episode will be in our show notes. I do want to thank you for tuning in. We always appreciate our audience and we always appreciate that we're able to help people by giving you guys things to think about so that you can ultimately get more money and more free time in your law firm. And now, before we conclude today, I'm going to ask you guys one small favor. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review. You can leave us a review any place that you listen to podcasts, whether it's on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Stitcher, iHeartRadio. But we really want to hear that the content that we're giving to you is valuable. And when you leave us a review, it makes it that much more likely that other people will have our podcast recommended to them when they are seeking information on how to build and grow their law firms. I'm Allison Williams, your law firm mentor, everyone. Have a great day.
Thank you for tuning in to the Crushing Chaos with Law Firm Mentor Podcast. To learn more about today's guest and take advantage of the resources mentioned, check out our show notes. And if you own a solo or small law firm and are looking for guidance, advice, or simply support on your journey to create a law firm that runs without you, join us in the Law Firm Mentor Movement free Facebook group. There, you can access our free trainings on improving collections in law firms, meeting billable hours, and join the movement of thousands of law firm owners across the country who want to crush chaos in their law firms and make more money. I'm Allison Williams, your law firm mentor. Have a great day.